The length of a chord or a half chord depends on both the angle and the radius of the circle. Ptolemy used a radius of 60 and worked base 60. Islamic geometers continued this practice and produced tables giving what we would call the values of 60 trigonometric function theta for the different trigonometric functions. We'll use the notation r sine theta equals 60 sine theta. Now, simple geometry can be used to give us the following exact values, r sine 60, r sine 45, r sine 30, and r sine 18. The half angle and angle difference formulas can be used to find r sine for other angles, but not r sine of one degree. Since we'd like a table of chords in one degree increments, this is inconvenient. In the 15th century, Jamshid al Kashi used an approximation technique to find r sine one degree. Although al Kashi worked in base 60, and we should as well, we'll present his work using more familiar base 10. Though for the sufficiently adventurous, I'll post something that shows al Kashi's work in base 60. So the angle summation formulas and a little algebra gives us the relationship between the sine of 3 theta and the sine of theta. Now, since r sine theta equals 60 sine theta, this gives us sine of theta is 1 60th r sine theta, and our triple angle formula gives us And while this is true generally, if theta is equal to 1 degree, we have the relationship. And this is useful because we know the exact value of r sine of 3 degrees. So if x is r sine of 1 degree, then we have r sine of 3 degrees equals 3x minus 1 900th x cubed. Now, again, we know the exact value of r sine 3 degrees, and so to illustrate al Kashi's approach, we'll use r sine 3 degrees, which is approximately 3.14016. al Kashi actually used a much more accurate value. And if we substitute this in, we can rewrite our equation as... Now, as a side note, this is the type of equation that could be solved using the Chinese method of approximating roots of polynomials. But Alkashi used a very different method to approximate a solution. And this is circumstantial evidence that Alkashi's method of finding fifth root was original within the Islamic world. To solve this equation, Alkashi did what a bad algebra student would do and solve for x this way. The important difference here is Al-Kashi didn't stop and say that this was a solution. He then used a method of successive approximations, and that works as follows. First, we see that x is approximately equal to 1, and so we can write x in expanded form as 1 plus a tenths plus b one hundredths plus c one thousandths, and so on where a, b, and c, and so on are the digits in the successive decimal places of x. Now, our expansion has an x cubed term, and notice that if we expand, we get 1 plus 3a tenths plus a whole bunch of other terms where all the remaining terms have a factor of 1 one hundredths or smaller. And this suggests they won't affect the value in the first decimal place. Consequently, if we let x equal 1 plus 8 tenths and substitute into our equation, we get where on the left-hand side we'll use the full value 1 plus 8 tenths, and on the right-hand side we'll use the approximation x is approximately 1. You can think about that as our previous approximation on the right and our new approximation on the left. So we can simplify and solve for a, which gives us And remember, a is supposed to be the next digit of the root, and so that next digit is going to be a equal to 0. Now we know x is approximately 1.0, so 
Adding that next decimal place, we let x equal 1.0 plus b hundredths, which gives us. And again, on the left, we have that new approximation. On the right, we have the current approximation. And we solve. And this is going to give us b equal to 4, where we round down, since this is supposed to be the next digit in the expansion. And repeating, we know that x is 1.04 something, so we'll let x equal 1.04 plus c thousandth, which gives us, again, new value on the left, old value on the right, and solve. So we know that x is 1.047 plus d ten thousandths, and so we get, and so we approximate x to be 1.0471, and we could continue to find more digits, but our accuracy is going to be limited by this approximation that we used for r sine 3 degrees. Now a few other useful things we found here. We found that r sine 1 degree is about 1.0471. And keep in mind this is half of one side of a 180 gon inscribed in a circle of radius 60. And so the perimeter of this 180 gon will be 180 times 2 times our approximation. And we use this as an approximation to the circumference of the circle with radius 60. We get an approximation for pi. And Alkashi actually used a more accurate approximation for r sine 3 degrees and found the first nine sexagesimal places of r sine 1 degree. And this could be used to approximate pi to 16 decimal places, a world record at the time.